How's it going guys? It's Kyle of the How To Guy 123 here and today I'm going to show you guys 6 different tips on how to fix network connectivity issues on the Nintendo Switch or Nintendo Switch Lite. These tips should fix all error codes related to network issues. This will fix whether you can't connect to a Wi-Fi network whatsoever or if you're once connected to Wi-Fi just fine and it has since stopped working, this should hopefully fix that as well. So let's go ahead and get right into the tutorial. Tip number 1. Did you try turning it off and turning it back on again? I know it might seem a little bit obvious, but something as simple as just restarting your Switch might just fix the issue. Uh, it's worth giving it a try before digging into your network settings. Just hold down the power or sleep button on the top of your Switch for about 10 seconds. Then go down to power options, then select restart. Now wait for your Switch to restart. Once your Switch has restarted, try to see if you can connect to your Wi-Fi, then test the connection to confirm that everything is working correctly. Tip number 2 is to change the Wi-Fi security mode on your Switch. The security mode is how your router interprets your Wi-Fi password. You might be trying to connect to your Wi-Fi with a security mode that is unsupported on your router. To fix this, go to Settings, Internet, and Internet Settings. Choose your network and then select Change Settings. Go down to the third option which says Security and select it. This will open a list of 5 different options of security modes to choose from. The most common one nowadays is WPA2. But try connecting to your Wi-Fi with another security mode to see if it works. Here I'll try WPA. Once you select a security mode, you'll need to enter your Wi-Fi password again. And then once you've done that, press OK. Now select Save and connect to this network. This should work for me because I know my router actually supports WPA and WPA2. Now if this doesn't work, try each security mode and to see if it makes a difference in connecting to your network. Tip number 3 is to enter manual DNS settings. A DNS server is used to translate host names. By default you are given a DNS server to use from your ISP, however you might not be able to connect to them properly or there's just a problem with the DNS server in general. We can enter DNS server addresses from third party companies and see if they work better or if they fix any connection issues. Now to do this go to your settings, internet, then internet settings. Then choose your network and then select change settings. Go down until you see DNS settings. By default it should be set to automatic. Select it and then choose manual. Two new settings will appear, primary DNS and secondary DNS. First select primary DNS and then enter 1.1.1.1. This is a DNS server and it's hosted by a company called Cloudflare and this is regarded as the best DNS server to use. You could also choose to enter 8.8.8.8 if you wanted to use Google's DNS servers which are also a very good choice as well. In this case I'm going to be using 1.1.1.1 and then once you've entered that press OK and then select secondary DNS. Now enter 1.0.0.1 if you're using the Cloudflare DNS servers but if you're going to be using Google's DNS servers enter 4.4.4.4. After you've entered that, press OK and then save your new settings. Now attempt to connect to your network. Tip number 4 is to set a static IP address on your switch. This can prevent different devices on your network from conflicting with each other if they have the same local IP address and will also stop your switch's local IP address from changing. In this video, I'm going to kind of go through this a little bit quickly to save time on the video, but I'll leave a link in the description below to Nintendo's support page, which breaks this process down very easily. So to set static information on our Nintendo Switch, we're going to need another device to locate some network information. This could be a PC, a Mac, or even a smartphone will work in this case, but I'm going to demonstrate this on my PC. Uh, so the first thing we're going to need to do is 
click on the start button here and then you're going to want to type in cmd and click on command prompt this window is going to open here and you're going to want to type in ipconfig now you'll see a whole bunch of information appear here it might look a little bit overwhelming but it's uh, not too bad and you're going to want to locate uh so for example here i'm connected to my internet through ethernet so i'm going to want to locate ethernet if you're connected to your internet uh, through wi-fi you want to locate wi-fi and so I'm on Ethernet, and this is all the information about my network here. And we're going we're gonna to need to locate three pieces of information here. And I'm just going to open a notepad here just to write down uh, all the information we need here. So the first piece of information is IPv4 address. This is the IP address of our computer. And we're going to want to just highlight it and uh, copy that. Uh, so we're going to take this number here, and we're going to modify it in a second for our switch. So we're also going to need the subnet mask here, and we're just going to copy that, and I'll paste that in notepad here as well. And default gateway, you see I have two default gateways here. One here contains a bunch of letters, and it's separated uh, by colons. We can ignore this one. We want the one that just has numbers in it, and is separated by periods. So I'm going to copy that, and once again, paste that into notepad here. And this is all the information we're going to need to enter a static IP address onto our switch. So let's go ahead and head over to our switch and enter this information. Now back over on your switch in internet settings, choose your network and then select change settings. Scroll down to where it says IP address settings and set it from automatic to manual. Three new options will appear. First, select IP address. Now look under the information that we found before on our PC. Under IPv4 address, this is my computer's IP address and we want to modify this number to be unique to the switch. This number must be different than any other device on your network. And to make sure this, you're going to want to take the last two dig digits of the IP address and then add 20 to them. So in my case, the last two digits on my computer's IP address are 34. So we're going to want to take 34 and add 20 to it. So on my switch, I would want to enter 192.168.0.54. Once you've entered this number, press OK. Now choose subnet mask, and then enter the exact same subnet mask that we found on our PC, then press OK. And then finally choose gateway and enter the same default gateway as we found on our PC. Then once again, press OK, then save your new settings and try to connect to your network. Tip number 5 is to connect to a 5 GHz Wi-Fi connection if available. When selecting a Wi-Fi network to connect to, you might see that your Wi-Fi has more than one option, one of them with a 5 GHz or 5G in the name. As you can see on screen, I've highlighted my two networks here, one of them just says network which is just my normal 2.4 GHz connection, and the other one says network 5G which is actually my 5 GHz connection. And this is the one I'd want to connect to. Unfortunately, not all routers support 5 GHz connections though, so if you have an older router, you might be out of luck with this one. 5 GHz connections are generally faster, and the switch seems to have better reception on 5 GHz networks. My switch will actually not connect to my normal network whatsoever, so this is one of the ways I fixed my network connection issues. Finally, tip number 6, if all else fails, try to reset your router. This has fixed my switch's network issues a few times. Simply unplug the power cord of your router for 10 to 15 seconds, then re-plug in the router, and then wait for your internet to go back up again. Now attempt to connect to it. So that is it for this video, I hope these tips helped. If they did, leave a like, and if they didn't, leave a dislike. If there's anything I might have missed, or if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you guys would like, and I'll see you guys in my next video.